Hi everyone, this is Andrew at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center and this is Fossil Friday. Well, not much has been going on here lately. It's the winter and our off season here. So we're just working with what collections we have. So all the bones right here, these are Myasaura bones from Montana. These are all parts of the hip, just one part of the animal, mind you. Stretching all the way over here and on these tables this way. There's a bunch on these shelves right here, and um, well, there's a bunch of myosaur bones in this container, and in this one, and that's a little boring, isn't it? Let's do something different. Uh, how about, oh, chimerosaurus. There's a, well, this shelf right here, this is all chimerosaurus bits, as is that one, and that one. These ones over here. All right. So you might have noticed if you're longtime fans of this series, which I hope you are, but even if you're not, well, you can find the videos easily enough. We talk a lot about Camarasaurus and Myasaura, and there's a lot of reasons for that. As you can see, a lot of our collections are Camarasaurus and Myasaura. They're very common dinosaurs to find in bone beds and millions of years ago when they lived respectively, around 75 million years ago for Myasaurus, 150 million years ago for Camarasaurus. They were some of the most abundant animals in their environment. So as such, there's a lot of bones to recover from these guys. So it's a very, very common dinosaur. Now, when you look at the news, most of the time the news is taken up by stories of new, fantastic dinosaur discoveries, which are great, don't get me wrong. But you can learn a lot by studying very common dinosaurs, which is a lot of what we do here at the Dinosaur Center. And a really good example of that is this bone right here. So this is a rib. So full disclosure, you're going to see a lot of ribs in upcoming episodes because we have a lot of ribs. And confession time. Ribs are the worst. They're difficult to dig up in the field without breaking them. They're difficult to get out of the field without breaking them. They're difficult to prep in the lab. They're difficult to put together. They're difficult to put on mounts. Ribs are just difficult. Even when you break a rib today, a doctor won't set that for you. There's no way to do it. You just have to let it heal on its own. That can be incredibly painful. And today, we have something like that. It's a rib that started a mystery. So this rib was found of over two decades ago in one of our sites just 10 minutes away from the museum called the BS Quarry. But we rediscovered it just last year. We brought it into the lab to work on it, and we discovered this right here. You can see there's a pin there with a little marker. This is a bulge at the center of this rib. The rest of it was missing in excavation, but more on that later. So there was a bulge on this rib that clearly had the evidence of a break or an injury. So that's interesting enough, not entirely unheard of. Again, it's a pretty common affliction for a pretty common dinosaur. But then we decided to get this rib CT scan just to see if there was more to this story than meets the eye. And it turns out, that there was something encased inside this bulge. So that immediately got us extremely excited because we have evidence in some cases of bits of teeth being broken off in bones and being embedded in the bones themselves. And the bone, if the animal survives, of course, which this one clearly did, grows around the tooth and absorbs it into the structure of the bone as it's healing. That's pretty interesting. So we decided to prep this bone more. It wasn't prepped fully at the time, just in case there was something that we didn't want to get through. But then as we prepped it, we realized that that wasn't the case. What we were looking at was this hole right here. And inside that hole was rock. So that was the structure on the inside of the bone. So it wasn't a tooth. That's a little dispiriting, I guess. But the story that it tells is one that we haven't fully solved yet, which makes it all the more interesting. So what we have here is an abscess. So a bone abscess occurs when a bone is broken and it isn't healing correctly. And as a result, there's kind of a big pocket of pus that grows and the bone overgrows that pocket of pus. Basically, it's a bone zit, a really painful, awful bone zit. It's a gross and interesting way to think about it. So what we have here in the case of this abscess or bone zit is a spot where the pus would have actually been leaking out of the hole. Ick, I know. Think of this as a pus drainage canal. So an abscess bone, that's really interesting, but we don't really know exactly what would have caused that until this came up. So follow me into the museum. See, this is telling of the type of discovery that it was because we found this rib just last year and the answer, at least part of the answer to our problem came from our wonderful mount of Camarasaurus, who we'll talk about in a future episode. I'm sure there's lots of stories to discuss with this guy. But the answer to this question of the rib has to deal with those 
those bones right there, right in front of the hip, the dorsal vertebrae. So it's going to get a little noisy. I'll pop up there and show you. Right in this section, BS 939. Now these are two dorsal vertebrae, two with one number because they were found fused together, the result of some sort of traumatic injury that happened to the animal. And so, well, if there was a traumatic injury to the vertebrae, something might have happened to the rib. And it turns out that this rib fits on these vertebrae. How do we know that for a fact? Well, the top portion of this rib is missing. The rib head is gone. And we found the rib head of the same size and shape attached to those two vertebrae on the mount. That is a pretty significant discovery and one that we only made once we were just poking around and rediscovering bones, a very common bone with a very common affliction on a very common animal that tells a very uncommon story. Something happened to this animal that broke those two dorsal vertebrae, fused them together, fused this rib, or at least partially fused this rib to those bones and caused a nasty pus leakage to come out of this animal. Now, what was the cause of that? Well, we don't know, but that's half the fun, is that it's a mystery, and it's a mystery that we're eager to solve. But at the risk of going on at length of things we don't know, I think we'll cut this short today. So, hope you enjoyed this rather obsessive video about dinosaur bones and injuries. You'll see a lot more instances of this as we go through, because we love that sort of stuff here. In the meantime, like this video, leave us your feedback, hope you share it, hope you got a lot out of this one, and we'll, we'll be back with you next week. So until then, this is Andrew at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center keeping your Friday fossiliferous.